Hi, you guys. Welcome to First Impression Friday, where I take a look at an entire pattern collection for the very first time and just kind of talk, say my thoughts out loud about it. <laughs> Today, we're going to take a look at Stitch Witch Patterns. And if you go to their About section, she kind of gives you a little bit of her journey into um, ending up as a pattern designer. The coolest part about this is they are based in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which I think is our very first Nova Scotian pattern designer featured on First Impression Friday. Um, she has a very sort of sustainable type of mission, uh, wanting to lessen the carbon footprint and make your own garments um, is part of her mission. So she wanted to, she says here, um, I wanted to use my patterns as a way to encourage those who are intimidated by the thought of sewing their own wardrobe by creating simple, easy to understand patterns. So that is what we are going to be kind of basing our impressions off of today. And without further ado, let's take a look at some of these patterns. Um, she did say that early on in her sewing journey, she had a bit of a um, vintage kind of flair. So I think we're going to see a lot of that in her pattern designs as well. This is the Capulet dress. If you love a dress with a swishy skirt and sleeves that gives you all the drama, then the Capulet dress was designed just for you. Dreamy, customizable pattern that features two sleeves, fitted Juliet sleeve, or a structured puff sleeve. The dress bodice has a fitted semi-empire waist that sits above the natural waistline. The skirt hem sits above the knee for a comfortable mini length. A uh, puffier, fuller sleeve and skirt, or this is fabric recommendations. Um, she recommends a uh, highly structured, lightweight fabric like organza or taffeta. So that's really interesting. A structured and lightweight fabric. Definitely organza and taffeta fall into those categories, but you don't see a lot of designs um, made with these kinds of fabrics in mind. So that's pretty cool. If you prefer a more relaxed look, choose a fabric with more drape, which I think she probably would lean towards something with like rayon blended in, for example. The Capulet dress also has instructions on how to add your own lining to the bodice and skirt. Probably really helpful since organza and taffeta both can be sheer. The dress lining is optional and require you to have the equivalent amount of lining as the main fabric. And then intermediate sewing level, size range is 0 to 34. We will see just what that means here in a minute. Um, here's the notions that you need. Uh, Non-stretch wovens. And then shirting, cotton twill, jacquard, organza, printed cotton, velvet, suiting, chambray, and gingham. So those are the more drapier type of fabrics. Um, these are the Printing formats, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Oh, you only have 24 hours to download your PDF. So buy and then check your email right away. Okay. So, oh, we're not going to be able to look at the pictures big. Okay. We are not. So this is as big as the photos are going to get. Otherwise, they just get really too big. <laughs> but it looks like what we have here is a... As she said, kind of fitted bodice. It does have vertical bust darts. And then we've got this cutie little sleeve, which is that, does that look like it's just tacked on to you? It does to me. Um, and then maybe there's some elastic in here. Was that in the notions list? Yeah, elastic. So I think there's elastic in the sleeve here and also some here as well. And then it just goes into a full gathered skirt with a really nice deep hem. Here you can see more of the back and there's an invisible zipper. The back is kind of squared off. Um, definitely like the little prairie dress of our dreams, <laughs> right? So this is the Juliet sleeve that has like, it's actually long sleeved, um, just attached to the bottom of this little puff or you have the puff sleeve. Um, she does not say that you need anything that would make me think that this is um, like interface with anything to keep the puff super big. Um, in the sheer fabrics, you probably wouldn't want that anyways because you could see it, but the sheer is going to kind of hold itself up anyways, the organza. But if you're using some of these lighter weight drapier fabrics, you could absolutely interface them to give that sleeve some structure. 
I don't know if she discusses that in the instructions or not, but here is her size chart. Okay. We're going to look at inches. So her bust goes from 30 to 58 inches. Nice. And then the hip is 32 to 60. So nice big range there. The finished garment measurements for this one, she only gives the bust, which is all that really matters. I mean, the waist is kind of important too, um, but that's going to be largely based off of your bust as well because the waist is raised. But it looks like 30 and a half. So half an inch of ease in, in the bust. That's not a ton. Um, but as you can see from the photos, it's a very, very close fitting bust, but this has no stretch, no give, like that's designed to be very, very close fitting. Um, you think about like those kind of vintage dresses where the breast tissue is kind of like spilling out the top. It's a little bit like that. So you could let out some of your, um, seam allowances if you want to, you know, eke out another little, another little half inch, maybe a full inch of ease in the bust just to give yourself some more wiggle room if you feel like that would be too tight too constricting and then here are the elastic situation and then fabric requirements so again a pretty small little chart here but you can scan through to see um and she has it for the two different sleeves as well okay and they're like, this one's 15 bucks or 15 Canadian dollars. So that's that. Next we have, can we really just go through these like this? Oh, I love that. I love this little previous and next thing. Um, this is the Basque dress, 15 Canadian again. This looks to be super cute. It's a dress and blouse. I wish it said that up here. The multitasking pattern is our most customizable yet. The Basque dress includes a dress option with two skirt variations, either A-line or gathered. I'm thinking this is A-line and this is gathered. And two sleeve options, a three-quarter length gathered ruffle sleeve or a shorter puffy sleeve, which is this. But this isn't so I guess the third sleeve option would be sleeveless. I don't know. The pattern features a romantic V-shaped waistline and a deep, soft, square neckline. The dress has a zipper back closure. The blouse version features a fully lined self and a button back closure. Okay. Pattern also features uh, bust, uh, separate bust cups which is nice. And then intermediate, the same size range as before. And then light to medium weight wovens like quilting, cotton, twill, linen, chambray, gingham, and poplin. Okay. Are we going to get some more? I can't really, is this, I'm having a hard time telling what's what. Let's see if this helps. Okay. So gathered skirt with our two sleeve options, but also sleeveless is clearly an option here as well. Okay. And then here it is with the A-line skirt, right? And then do we also get to see the bloused version? Okay, and then we, okay, I see, I see, I see. So then the blouse version is here, but the woman, the model up front, she's wearing the blouse and the skirt as separate pieces, but the blouse is sleeveless. And then I think that this is the dress with the blouse over it, uh, or they just color blocked and used the solid green for the bodice part and then the um, plaid for the sleeves and skirt. Hard to tell. Um, here's another set of photos again where you have, this is the long sleeve version. So this is the blouse and the skirt. I like it as separates. I think it's super cute. Um, you have your bust dart, horizontal and vertical, gathered into like this little V, which is really kind of having a moment right now. I'm seeing a lot of stuff pop up with this little V, both in sewing and also in ready to wear. You have your zipper back, but then also a little tie, which I don't think that was mentioned. Um, and then there's that. And then here's the A-line skirt, which is shorter. And then the skirt has a couple pleats in the front, a couple in the back. Again, you have a little tie here. 
and then the sleeveless version. So again, non, no, non stretch and stretch woven. So you could use like a stretch sateen or stretch twill or something for the more structured look. Um, and then here's the blouse again with sleeves button up the back. And then here's the sleeveless blouse. Okay. And then the same size chart as before, same finish measurements for the, um, for the AB cup, just that half an inch. But when you go up to the CD cup, you get one and a half inches of extra ease, extra wearing ease. Yeah. I wish we had more photos. I mean, we've only got three models here. Um, like I wish I could see the back of the, of this version especially because of like, is it, if this is the dress, I'd like to see the little tie. Um, and then, yeah, this is the blouse. I'm just, do you guys think that she was really able to button that up by herself? You know, that's my thing about these little cropped close fitting blouses. Can you really button that up? Or, or do you have like the bottom even if you had the bottom few buttoned up, I, I can't reach the middle of my back like that. And so then if it's a non-stretch woven, can you just pull it on over your head? I don't know. I don't know how I, yeah, the logistics of getting in and out of that <laughs> are always what holds me up from those types of tops. Okay. So this one is the Atlas top. It's another $15 Canadian. I'm not a hundred percent sold that there's a lot of value there. I mean, uh, well, let's read about it. The perfect piece for your warm weather wardrobe. The Atlas top is a very quick and satisfying make. No fussy zips, clasps, or buttons. The crisscross back offers a perfect amount of ventilation for any heat wave with the added sophistication of center front darts and a fitted neckline. Cropped version and longer version for more coverage. Um, center front darts, center front seam, and a crisscross wrap back. The armholes and neckline are finished with facings. Okay, so beginner to intermediate, a smaller size range, lightweight wovens and stretch wovens. So we've got the center front seam. We've got, I mean, it looks like darts, but I don't know if this is like a pressing, you know, crease or if that's actually a seam too that goes all across the front. That deep one inch hem again. She mentioned these are done with facings. Obviously, you can use bias tape as well. The fit here is a little bit tight. Um, it's hard to tell where these wrinkles are coming from exactly. Obviously, up and over her shoulder, but is it because the arm size is technically too small? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's really cute. I just don't know. This seems so simple for $15. Um, oh, okay. So this is how the dart is done through the front. That's really cute. I like that. Um, crop version, long version. I'm imagining the models wearing the cropped version. Um, and this is how you make those darts. Size chart again. This one is only going to go up to 50 inches in the bust, right? 26. Yeah. Um, still pretty okay, um, but not as great as the extended, obviously. And then finished measurements. There's an inch of ease in this bust line. She likes some close fitting, close fitting stuff. Um, I think you could make this a little bit looser and, and have even more of that kind of vibe. I'm, what am I saying? You could have it a little bit looser and have more of that like boho kind of thing that I think she's going for here. And then I was about to lose my train of thought because I was thinking that if you had facings all through here, you could extend it down and make a shelf bra, um, which would be great. Um, I don't know how it would look through here. Obviously, it would still be really cute with some kind of like crisscross, like lacy bralette type of thing. But if you wanted to have something where you just throw it on and not worry about undergarments, you could probably do a built-in shelf bra there which would be kind of cool, but it'd be better if that were included for $15 at the same time. 
Okay, next, the Bolin, oh, how do you say that? Boylin? Bolin, oh, I know it's like a famous character. Anne Boleyn, is that how you say it? Bo, oh, Lord. Um, the perfect knit staple for your wardrobe. Look how cute this is. This close-fitting top has the perfect amount of subtle drama and sophistication for any look. Deep square neckline, gathered sleeves, and optional back ties. Not so basic, is incredibly effortless, and has only two pattern pieces. So the front and back are one pattern piece, and the sleeve is the other pattern piece? Okay, uh, I'm fine with that. Um, quick and snappy afternoon project, I'd say so. Two versions, one... Or, I'm sorry, a basic one-piece bodice or a two-piece bodice designed for some fun color blocking. Let's see if we're going to see a photo of that. Um, and then there's also a Bolin top, top wrap hack. Let's see if we see that in the photos too. And then the smaller size range. Fabrics are going to be 40% stretch with high recovery like jersey, ponte de Roma, velour, crepe knit, ribbed knit cotton spandex knit, stretch mesh, etc. Okay, so trying to take as close of a photo or close of a look at this as we can. It looks like this is probably like a rectangle bodice with the little elasticated sleeve attached. It is really simple and straightforward, making me think, why didn't we think of this sooner? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, this is what the back is a little bit squared off. Again, I think this sleeve is just tacked on. Making me think we might be able to just hack this ourselves. Okay, so this is the version we just looked at. This is the two-piece bodice where you can do color blocking. So great little um, scrap buster, even especially if you did the sleeve to match. Like if you did a white sleeve and bodice and then black sleeve and bodice, I think that would be super chic. Super chic. Um, this is the smaller size range, but this is also the first knit that we're looking at. So the finished garment measurements at the bust line for a zero is negative eight inches of ease, which is why you need so much stretch and recovery in your fabric. So size up, obviously, if you are... Um, if your fabric does not have that 40% of ease. But yeah, you can see here, finish edge of neckline, fold down, center front, stitch, press, make sure. Hmm. So this ends up being the neckline and then this is where you attach the sleeves. Guys, I really feel like I might be able to figure this out. <laughs> and some of you may be thinking the same thing as well. It's literally a tube top with sleeves attached. Oh, here's the wrap. Well, that's cute. That's super cute. Okay. I wonder if the wrap is also included in the extra section where if I were able to figure out how to do this on my own, if I could just get the wrap instructions for free. I don't know. Girlfriend loves a little puffy sleeve. Um, this is the Tudor blouse, a whimsical summery piece designed for the romantic at heart. Inspired by 16th century square necklines, the drama of Tudor era fashion and modernize for the contemporary sewist. Love that. Uh, crop version or longer version that reaches the high hip. This also includes a wrap hack um, designed for the short blouse version only. Center front features a button closure. Uh, clasps and snaps can be used in place of buttons. That's probably a little bit more traditional. Sleeves are elasticated, making the blouse a very quick sew. Um, two bust cup options, um, A, B, and then C and up. And then the full size range. And then this is designed for wovens. Um, I She doesn't list this, but I think that um, double gauze would also be really beautiful. So here's this main version. Again, it's the same idea of this like little square top with a sleeve 
kind of sewn through the arm side, you know. Here is the back. Yep, because it buttons in the front. And the fit on this looks really good. Like those buttons are not pulling apart, even though the back seems to be pretty close fitting. Here's the wrap pack, also still super cute. And then it ties in the back like so. And then we have this version where it ties in the back. This is cute. This is like three different tops in one. Oh, look, here's probably that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So short version, long version. I love that there are princess seams in the back because a lot of us have... Like, for example, for me, I have a lot of fullness in my front, but my back is pretty narrow. So being able to take that in in several different spots is really nice. And then here's the wrap, where it wraps in the front. And then you also have it where it wraps in the back. Loves. That's really cute. Tudor blouse. Love that. Oh, did we look at everything? Yeah, I think we just have the... Um, fabric notions requirements we went through all of that sizing is the same as we've been going over um that same half an inch for the smaller cup size and the one and a half inches for the full cup size and then just a little bit more insight into her instructions cute all right bathurst top I don't know why I feel like I've seen this before, but I feel like I've seen this before. <laughs> this is your new summer wardrobe staple with no fussy zippers, buttons, or clasps. The bat hearse top is a quick and easy sew. This pattern features a tie back closure, side darts, and an open back. The bat hearse top has two lengths, extra cropped or slightly longer that reaches just past the natural waist. The bat hearse top requires a small amount of fabric, making it the perfect stash buster. Beginner, smaller size range, light to medium weight wovens and stretch wovens. And we have a little mini French dart here. I'm assuming this whole thing is fully lined. She didn't mention anything about um, facings and you don't see them in the illustration. So... I'm assuming it's fully lined and then oh facings interfacing optional for facing so maybe it is faced but I don't see why you couldn't just line it and nip all that in the bud same thing with if you wanted to do a um, you wouldn't be able to do a full shelf bra all the way around but you could do a lining and sew in some bust cups and that might help a little bit at least with you know nipples and you know maybe just make you it wouldn't be supportive, but it would just look smoother, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's all it is. Okay. Yeah, I think I've definitely seen this on Instagram or something. I also want to say that these the past few tops that we've had that have all been cropped, I know some of you are like, I don't do crop tops. I don't even do tops that hit in my high hip. Um, obviously, you could lengthen them, That's and you could widen the the side seams and lengthen them or consider just adding a skirt to the bottom of any of them and then you would have a dress I particularly think this would be really cute dress even if you left the center back of the dress open <laughs> bear with me and then when you go to tie this maybe there's like some buttons or something along your skirt um, but that said you could probably just also leave off the ties and um, just attach a skirt to the bottom and have like an open back dress. You'd have to put a side zipper or something in. But other than that, I think it'd be really cute. You could also do elastic where you wouldn't need like an elastic waist. Um, and then it would just pull over your head. So some things to think about there. All right. Now this is, we're at a gift card and the maiden set. Uh, two piece pattern features a coordinating blouse and mini skirt. Perfect for mixing and matching textiles or creating a cohesive look with one textile. The maiden set includes a blouse with two neckline versions, queen and neckline, and deep curved neckline. Also features that Juliet sleeve and a sleeveless option, as well as a high 
or low back hem. Made in blouse as a snug corset fit, corset like fit along the waist with the option of installing boning. We recommend sizing up the waist for a less fitted look. The skirt has an A line cut with a mini length hem, separate bust cups, full size range, um, and then your medium weight wovens again. Um, we're only going to get this one picture. Would you look at that? Okay, so you've got the what is it called? Juliet sleeve, like we saw in the very first pattern. And then it has this little, I don't know, dippy down thing. And then over a skirt. So worn together or separately. Queen Anne neckline is this little like pyramid shape. You have darts without boning or you can add boning interesting and then you for your back you can do the dippy down thing in the back or cut it straight across same thing but you have a curved neckline and then you also have a sleeveless version here which is very corsety looking and then your skirt is just a simple a-line skirt with two pleats in the front two in the back and then and a zipper what's this fabric requirements size chart and then another size chart for the top okay yeah I mean this is very kind of you know period specific it could be very costumey um but that corset stuff is really kind of having a moment so I wouldn't write it off too quickly um people are really loving the corset these days so something to think about. This would be a good place to check because I think she does have a lot of um, experience and sort of passion about that kind of period type of stuff. These are her free patterns. She has a shell pillow. That's cute. That's it. She's got a shell pillow. Um, all right. So that is Stitch Witch Patterns. I know it's not going to be for everybody, but I do really think that these are some really cute designs that we don't see every day. You know, this is not going to be your like basic indie design which I kind of really like. Um, a lot of them can start to look the same. Where are all these photos in the listings? Oh, um, uh, what was I saying? I don't even remember, but not your basic indies. Um, oh, I was going to say she does love a puff sleeve, um, but so do I. So maybe, maybe that's just well aligned. I don't know, but that is Stitch Witch Patterns. I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Drop a comment. Um, in the comment section below, uh, there's a link in the description box to take you straight to Stitch Witch. Um, but that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye!